Hello everyone. Hello. It's me, that divination witch, back with another witchy video. I hope you're all doing well. This video is another in my series of different deities, spirits, entities that I have spoken with over the years. I am quite fortunate because I get to speak with a lot of spirits I wouldn't normally do. It's because I am that divination witch. I do a lot of readings for people. <laughs> so I haven't necessarily worked with all of these spirits, but I have met quite a few. Now, this spirit, this deity was requested for me to talk about and by several people actually. So I'm going to talk about Baphomet or Baphomet as some people call them. Uh, and yes, let's get into it. And if you are new here, I just want to say you are more than welcome to stick around and I hope you do. My name's Sarah, I'm that divination witch. This is a safe space that I have set up to help people. So I share what I've learned, I try and be down to earth. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask questions because no question is a silly question, you know, we all have them. So ask away. Uh, I try and help best I can. And if you like that, subscribe. <laughs> and I've got a link tree below if you're interested in getting a reading from me. I offer them on Patreon and on my store. It's all linked in the link tree. Thank you. Okay, so Baphomet or Baphomet. I call them Baphomet personally. Now, some people believe they are just a symbol uh, and I can see why. Uh, but for me, I believe they're more than that. They are a deity within their own right. Deities themselves, I personally believe, they're all an extension of source, the creator god that created everyone and everything. Uh, each deity out there, you know, has a different personality. We've got all sorts of different war gods and king gods and love gods and all, all these different archetypes. That's essentially what they are. And I suppose the human consciousness has created them in a way. They, they we, have shaped these deities into who they are. You know, they're a reflection of different cultures and beliefs, like Freya is different to Aphrodite, for example, <laughs> you know? With that being the case, I do believe Baphomet is a deity. Belief in this deity, belief in the values of this deity has spurred the deity to exist. You know, it's it sprung to life in a way. That, that's the way I see it. Now, Baphomet has a long history and complex history. And if you were to look at Baphomet, most people would think that's Satan and that it's the devil and that it's evil and, and all this stuff. Now, Baphomet, the values of Baphomet is supposed to be equilibrium. It's supposed to be values of fairness and justice. The, there is a saying that goes along with Baphomet that is, as above, so below. Baphomet is supposed to be the symbol of karma, I suppose, of, of cause and effect, of you reap what you sow in this world. Uh, and that is why they are depicted as not human, but not beast. They are not a man. They are not a woman. They are not anything, but they are everything. And that's a download I literally just got right there, <laughs> probably off Baphomet themselves. That's why that symbol is so complex and, and, and weird looking. I hope they don't mind me saying that. But even I think, oh, a bit weird looking, because they kind of are. They're the horned god, but they have breasts and they're a goddess. They're feminine, they're masculine. They're half goat, half human. All these things, in a way, monstrosity, but not in a, I'm not meaning that in a bad way. It's more, they are outside the box. They are different. They are anything and everything. They are an idea that it's wild. It's, you know, it's very complex. And Baphomet came around. It wasn't from Satanism. It wasn't from the left-hand bath. It was from the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar, if you don't know, uh, this is a crash course. I'm not a historian. <laughs> so don't go, you haven't got this right. Uh, well, I've got the main bits right. The Knights Templar 
were Christians. Ha, huh. got ya. <laughs> they were Christian knights. And way back in the day, the Crusades happened. Now, the Crusades were essentially ignorant Christians in the Middle Ages wanting to take back the Holy Land. War. It was war. It was claiming back the Christian Holy Land and going on a crusade, conquering back the Holy Land. <laughs> That's what it was about. So there is historical evidence and it's a bit up in the air, I believe, whether they did or didn't. But all evidence and my belief, you know, what I've learned and what I feel is that, yes, they worshipped Baphomet as a symbol because they thought they were on some holy crusade, some holy mission. They thought they were doing God's work and that was a symbol of showing that you reap what you sow, you, you know, we're claiming back the land. We are, we are, you know, doing the right thing. It, it was like that. Uh, but yes, it's up in the air whether or not they worshipped him, but there is historical evidence of the symbol of Baphomet and the Christian crusaders, the Knights Templar. Uh, but in modern times, or more modern times, the symbol of Baphomet, because of what Baphomet stands for, being that it's as above, so below, and supposed to be justice, etc., well, it's been adopted into Satanism, and it's been adopted into the left-hand path. So, when it comes to the image of Satan, the devil, even in Christianity, if you even want to look at it as an evil thing, Satan came about the way Satan looks to, you know, as a goat man, <laughs> as a devil with horns even, you know, the red devils you see. The devil imagery came about again, thanks to the Middle Ages and medieval times when people were forced into Christianity. Uh, before that, pagan traditions, especially Celtic ones, uh, but also I'm thinking of Hellenic Greeks, uh, and not even just that. So one of the stereotypes of gods, archetypes that they had was a horned god, and Wicker has took that on and, uh, as a different thing. Uh, but one of the most popular ones is Kernanos, and he's, he's still about. He is a very ancient primordial god, uh, a Celtic god of nature and the wild. And the symbolism of a horned god, whether it was Kernanos or Pan, there's another one I can think of off the top of my head from the Hellenic beliefs, or Sylvanus, you know, there's, there's other horned gods. Uh, these nature gods were a symbol of the divine masculine, of wild things, of fertility, of nature, and, and reproduction, you know, from a male's perspective. So the symbol of Satan, the reason I'm rambling on about that, it was a way of Abrahamic religions, mean, meaning Christianity mainly, uh, to demonize any other belief that wasn't theirs. So they created an adversary image and all horned gods were suddenly Satan and Satanic and the devil. Now, Baphomet, I feel, is a controversial figure because, you know, Baphomet has a, a goat head, all right? And, and people kind of mix that up with Satanism because of the imagery. And Baphomet is a horned god, but they're also female. They are the ma masculine and the feminine. They are, in a way, without offence to Baphomet, but the imagery of them was, I suppose, a parody. It was, it was meant to put everything all in one image. That's the purpose of Baphomet. So, yeah, through the lens of, oh, it's an evil devil, that's where that comes from. But it, Baphomet was adopted into demonology and Satanism for that very reason as well. Now, Satanism, it's, it's a whole, it's an umbrella for a lot of different beliefs. There's a lot of different beliefs within that. Uh, and I could go on for ages about it from what I know. I am not a Satanist. <laughs> uh, but there are atheist Satanists and there are theistic Satanists. And there are some that are darker than others and some that believe different things than others. It's like Christianity. There's so many different types of Christian, you know. It's normally the way with religion. Uh, but as a whole, 
Satanism and Satanists believe in free will, whether even if that is an atheist Satanist, uh, they believe in being an individual, and it's it's a, a rebellious movement. Whether no matter how dark that can get or not dark, <laughs> uh, even the atheist Satanists, it's all about rebellion. It's all about you know worshiping yourself and caring for yourself. Uh, before anyone else, uh, kind of vibe. That that's in a nutshell. Okay, there's more to it than that. So it's understandable that they would adopt this figure. That one. All right, it looks like the devil. Yeah, whatever. We're going to take that on. And two, it's it's an act of rebellion. It's an act of saying f you to the patriarchy, to the other religions. F you. He's our symbol. They, Baphomet is our symbol. F you. And that is how Baphomet is, to my understanding, being adopted in with the left-hand path, with Satanism and demonology, etc. Now, Baphomet, like I've said, they have taken on their own entity. They are a god. They are a deity within their own right, the way I see them. And I have met that energy. And because they've been adopted into this pantheon, I mean, they were very powerful anyway as a symbol before that. Uh, I see them as up there in the hierarchy of, you know, the, the demonic, infernal pantheons. They're up there. Now, they're not a member of the Goetia. They're not, I suppose, a demon per se. But I guess they are a left-hand path deity, not just because they've been adopted into Satanism and stuff, but because of what they stand for, they're not all about self-sacrifice or anything like that. It's more, no, look after yourself and, you know, as above, so below. If you're an a-hole, you're going to have bad things happen to you. But if you're a good person, good things will happen to you. That kind of vibe. So I can see why they've been, you know, adopted in to the left-hand path and that side of things. Now... Like I say, I see them as up there in the hierarchy and that means well-respected uh, within that pantheon. That's the way I see the infernal divine. Well-respected, well-regarded and their symbol is used a heck of a lot because of what they stand for and because of how they look. So, you know, even in mainstream, I've done a video about gothic fashion and things like this. Their image is plastered all over. It's everywhere. <laughs> uh, and there's probably more to it than I even realise uh, in the worship of Baphomet. But they aren't inherently evil, but they aren't inherently good either. They are a neutral energy, a neutral spirit. Uh, but also a spirit of rebellion, I suppose, of, of rebelling against social norms. And that in itself is enough to make people afraid. <laughs> now, they're not out there wanting, you know, your soul bargains for, for, you know, like when people say, oh, they sell the soul to the devil or all this dark stuff. To my knowledge, no, they don't want that. What would be the point of that? <laughs> uh, I feel like they are a gatekeeper, uh, that they are... A, a deity that is all about it's like like lawful neutral energy they're all about divine justice and making sure everything is fair and that the law of the universe is fair uh, and they have counterparts they're saying they have angelic counterparts uh Michael is technically one of them. He is the swift hand of justice on the right hand path. You know, they all work together. Uh, I know that's going to sound controversial of me literally coming out with that. I've never thought of that before. Michael and Baphomet working together, but they're all, all deities work together, really, the way I see it. We need both sides. We can't have one without the other. So, yes, I see them as kind of like a, a, a gatekeeper to knowledge, in a way, and, and power and balance. Now, like I say, I've met them before. Uh, they've given me a message before. They've came through for other people. They normally, uh, when they've come through for other people, it's normally people who are going to be on the left-hand path. Uh, they're normally like an introductory 
spirit into that there's certain spirits that are uh and it's not because it's deluring you're in if you're destined for that path it's to to make sure that you are 100 percent okay with that and you're committed to that and that you really want it and you've got the right attitude uh, it's the same with the right hand path there are certain spirits that seem to reach out more commonly than others and again michael's one of them if you are going to be doing angelic things he's not the only one but you know it's there's a reason he's like the most popular angel <laughs> because he is he's he's doing their work <laughs> you get me uh so yeah, Baphomet is like that. That's the way I see them. Now, how do I actually see them? I see them very much like the imagery. Uh, they they are not a man, they are not a woman, although I often give them the pronouns of he, uh, and I feel they're all right with that. But they came through very tall, very, very, very tall, about seven foot or something, mega tall, wearing a cloak, but probably naked underneath. I think that was just for my sake. <laughs> uh so I don't know if they had breasts or not. Uh, you know, that's a bit personal anyways. I'm not, that's just me. I'm not looking at everyone's boobs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just saw them with the goat head uh, wearing a long robe and very tall. That's the way I've seen them when they've came through. They speak in quite a deep voice, very authoritative. Uh, they don't like people being too frivolous I, I've done that before around them I cracked a joke I forgot what it was the first time I met them I cracked a joke and I shouldn't have and uh oh they got a bit offended by it I don't want to say that the scaremonger but they felt a bit disrespected by it and uh I was like no I'm, I'm sorry uh they accepted my apology always show respect with spirits you know I, I don't like the fear monger and that's not my intention uh, but any spirit, whether it's Baphomet or Zeus or anyone, <laughs> you know, especially if you don't know them, don't go cracking jokes. It's like you meet a stranger, they could get offended by that. Uh, you know, any everyone's different and everyone has different tolerances, don't they? So just be polite. <laughs> I've learned that. I was in a daft, goofy mood at the, the time and I remember the feeling of peeing them off. But I, <laughs> I can't remember what I said, but yeah, I was daft. I was daft. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm like that. I get in silly moods and think everyone understands I'm only joking, but actually, yeah, sometimes I put my foot in it. <laughs> Same with people. Uh, but yes, that's, that's about it. That's my experience with them. Uh, like I say, I don't think they're inherently bad or inherently good. They're neutral. Uh, I don't really know what they would want in, in terms of an offering. I uh, know there's probably loads of different paths there about them, saying all sorts of different things. To me, if I was to approach them, if I wanted to work with them, I would light them a candle and I would speak with them. I would maybe do a, a reading with them, meditate with their energy, ask them to show me and go from there. Like with any other deity, do your research, look into things, look into what they like and don't like. But I feel like with a spirit like Baphomet, it gives off such an ancient energy that it's like, well, I don't, as long as you're respectful, I don't think there's anything you could do to cheese them off. Apart from being an idiot like I was, <laughs> you know, cracking an inappropriate joke or something. But as long as you're polite mature you've got nothing to worry about you know and try your best and at the end of the day if it's not for you it's not for you say goodbye respectfully leave it like that uh yeah they're not like i say they're not a, a spirit although they are associated with the left hand they're not a spirit that is very left hand and very you know demanding of you to do certain things not to my knowledge anyways so uh, yeah, I, I hope this has helped. You know, a couple of people have wanted me to speak on them. So there we are. That's my experience. And uh, yeah, until next time. Well, before I say it, if you've got anyone else you want me to talk about, feel free to request it. Okay, but yes, until next time, stay safe, stay witchy. Bye.